control of blood pressure, how certain neurologic diseases result in blood pressure dysregulation, and the symptoms of NOH. When a person is lying down, blood volume is distributed throughout his or her body. When the person stands, nearly a liter of blood shifts from the upper to the lower body. This orthostatic shift in blood volume produces a decrease in venous return, cardiac output, and blood pressure. In healthy people, the sympathetic nervous system quickly responds by triggering reflex tachycardia and vasoconstriction, thus restoring normal tension in the upright posture. When a person stands, the gravity-induced drop in blood pressure is detected by sensory baroreceptors in the carotid sinus and the aortic arch, and the information is relayed to the central nervous system. In the brain, a sympathetic response is initiated by the medulla. Signals are carried through the spinal cord and out to sympathetic ganglia. Postganglionic neurons provide direct sympathetic innervation to the heart and peripheral vasculature. In the body's response to standing, sympathetic activation causes postganglionic neurons to release norepinephrine. Norepinephrine stimulates alpha-1 adrenergic receptors in vascular smooth muscle, causing vasoconstriction. Norepinephrine also stimulates cardiac beta-1 adrenergic receptors, increasing contractility and heart rate. This action results in restoring normal tension within seconds of a person standing. NOH is caused by a deficit of norepinephrine or an inability to release norepinephrine appropriately from the sympathetic neurons. This condition may arise from a variety of neurologic disease states. Parkinson's disease and dysautonomias, such as pure autonomic failure, are characterized by the peripheral degeneration of autonomic nerves and a deficiency in the release of norepinephrine. The resulting blood pressure dysregulation may manifest as NOH and high variability in blood pressure, including supine hypertension. Patients with multiple system atrophy suffer from degeneration in the medulla and hypothalamus, as well as in the preganglionic sympathetic neurons. In these patients, the brain may not respond appropriately to baroreceptor signaling, leading to an overall baroreflex dysfunction and a resulting failure to increase norepinephrine release by the peripheral neurons. The enzyme dopamine beta-hydroxylase, or DBH, catalyzes the conversion of dopamine to norepinephrine. In people with an innate deficiency of this enzyme, insufficient norepinephrine synthesis and release results in NOH. As you can see, many neurologic diseases with desperate pathophysiologies result in a common underlying deficit, the inability to release adequate norepinephrine when required by a change in posture. The hypotension caused by failure of postganglionic neurons to release adequate norepinephrine in response to orthostasis can cause symptoms of NOH, including dizziness or lightheadedness, syncope, weakness, fatigue, and blurred vision. These symptoms may be debilitating and have a profound impact on a patient's ability to perform daily activities. Some patients may also experience headaches, neck pain, or cognitive slowing. Symptoms may result in falls and injuries. Patients may have a reduced ability to perform daily activities that require standing or walking. Symptomatic NOH is present in about one in five patients with Parkinson's disease and in most patients with multiple system atrophy. Pure autonomic failure, or PAF, and dopamine beta-hydroxylase deficiency are characterized by symptoms of NOH. The diagnosis of NOH requires, in addition to symptomatic presentation, a measured sustained fall in systolic blood pressure of at least 20 millimeters of mercury or a fall in diastolic blood pressure of at least 10 millimeters of mercury within three minutes of standing. Despite hypotension, there is no compensatory increase in heart rate. Recognizing and treating NOH as a distinct condition from the patient's underlying neurologic disease is critically important to improving the patient's ability to perform activities of daily living and reducing his or her risk of injury.